All right, so Dina has since passed out. Let's go check this place out. By the way, Ellie, if you look at her face, Ellie's pissed, man. She ain't happy. I think it's a very confusing thing to learn, right? Like, okay, cool, Dina. And then, I mean, Ellie got mad at her for not telling her, but I don't think Dina really knew until she got here. She also said, I think I'm pregnant because it's not like pregnancy tests are readily available in this world. So now we're, we're tied to Dina and we now have to care for the fact that she has unborn child. An American tragedy, Cassandra. Did Cassandra go all the way from Jackson, Wyoming to Seattle, Washington through a bunch of crazy shit just to find out that her girlfriend is pregnant from a guy that they're friends with who she dated before she started dating Cassandra? Because boy, would that be tragic if that was the plot. And no shelves, I don't, I mean, people have mentioned it in the YouTube comments, but. Pregnancy in the apocalypse. Yeah, not great. Not great. Pregnant. Fucking pregnant. How could you keep something like that? I'm a little bit surprised that Ellie's as angry about the secret as she is, because I don't get a sense that Dina has really been actively keeping it. From her. I, I I think there's maybe if we were gonna think about a reason why Dina wouldn't tell her, it would be because Ellie would try to take care of her and basically say, Don't come with me. And Dina has pretty strongly said, I'm here with you till the end. I, to me, I'm I'm more interested about the fact that Ellie is angry about being lied to as opposed to this basically realizing that now Dina's in danger. Maybe Dina's not going to be fully emotionally available to Ellie because she's going to have a kid. Maybe Dina decides that she wants the father to be involved. We can only assume as Jesse. Maybe she knows that childbirth is one of the most dangerous things that a woman could go through in the apocalypse right now because of how many things are likely to go wrong. And so now there's a chance that she could lose Dina. Remember, the only person that Ellie has actively acknowledged in her life as having never left her is Joel until he died and so then she kind of latches over to dina and here's another person who has the potential to leave her either through the complications of pregnancy or just making a decision to leave because she's pregnant or whatever reason there might be a lot probably floating around in her head and yet yes madame it's uh and joel died Shit. it's basically the reason why we're doing everything we're doing in the game um, you can catch his death. I think it was at the beginning of part three. September 4th. Me, Perez, Green, and Adams made it to the listening post two days ago, and so far, so good. WLF haven't come looking here yet. The city's lost to the WLF. We escaped headquarters out of sheer luck and good timing. Sheer looking good timing. Taurus, Ward, and the others are probably dead. Camping here. Grateful to be alive for now. September 6th. Can't sleep. Burning up with a fever. No medicine. Looked everywhere. We don't have anything except the uniforms on our backs. No contact from anyone on the radio either. How many of us made it out? September 7th. Still feverish. Don't have any big cut. Don't have any big cuts, so probably not an infection. The others are waiting until nightfall, then making a run to the hospital to get medicine for me and supplies for wherever we're going to ne going next. They're good guys. September 10th shouldn't be taking this long. Oh, jeez. Okay. This note's old. Still, better be careful. A little camp out here. This place looks like it's been deserted for quite some time. Now I say that knowing full well that me saying that 
I mean, it has no actual effect on whether something's in here, but certainly we have enough experience to know that there's a chance we're going to get something bad's going to happen. Not really anything back here. Oh, except the trading card. Hell yeah. After a near-death experience that left her in a coma for two weeks, this seasoned detective found that she could cross from our world to the spirit world, allowing her to communicate with the dead. Now known as Beyond, she splits her time between solving murder investigations and serving as a spiritual medium for grieving families seeking closure. However, her forays into the spirit world are clearly hastening her demise. She looks considerably older than her 35 years. How much longer does she have? Go in this door here, huh? Hmm. The projector room. Neat. Look at all this stuff. September 13th. I don't think they're coming back, crossed off. They're not coming back. Either got ambushed or they ditched me. Not my fault I got sick. At least the fever's gone, but now I'm fucking starving. I can probably raid the buildings nearby for food, then see if I can raise someone on the radio. September 15th. Constant rain means I at least won't die of thirst. Unfortunately, it keeps making the electricity kunk out all the time. Makes it kind of hard to use the radio. Not like anyone's answering anyway. The WLF can't have can't have hit all the Fedra listening posts. No way. Need to keep trying. September 16th. Dreamt they were laughing as I slowly bled out from a gut shot. Woke up an hour ago, still shaking. Need a cigarette. You think there'd be a picker a pack or two stashed somewhere in the fucking theater, but apparently not this one. September 19th. Power went out again. Going to head to the roof and see if I can get it back on. So if you want to make canon to some extent, like why would a person leave a letter like this? We have to look at them as being a person who's basically on their own. There's nobody else in the theater with them from what we can tell. And sometimes if people write in like a journal or something like that, it can sometimes make it feel like you're writing to somebody. Like it's, it's a relational task, even if it might only be read by you. Because there's the idea that when you write something down, it will be read by somebody else. Or it will be read by you. So it's an inherently dynamic and relational pursuit. And this person writing those notes, that very well could be what kept them sane as they were doing this stuff. Because they're in isolation and maybe not used to it. That's kind of the way that I like to think about the notes in this game is that this is people trying to maintain a sense of connection as best they can even if it's to a person who will read it way later on in time because knowing that that connection is there that these words might potentially be read might be enough to feel some semblance of human interaction and connection during a time where they're isolated Yeah, there's no power, Ellie. Need to get the power going. Yeah, that's, that's pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. God damn it. I love that she puts her hood up. Such a nice little touch. Okie dokie. What do we got here? Damn. Fried? Guess you weren't much of an electrician. Oof. <laughs> Got it. Sweet. 
Wheat. Well, as long as it works. Didn't we learn from the DLC that powering things on is a no-no? Well, definitely draws attention. Why don't we radio out, too, to a bunch of people that are in this area that aren't going to recognize me? That sounds smart, right? Right? Guys? What's this? This is keys, Ellie. Let's see what we do with these. I don't even know if there. Where was the locked door? Maybe through here. Always with her. The sick habit with the brick shit houses. Nice. Nine fourteen thirteen at the Pinnacle Theater. All proceeds to Seattle children. Sick habit set list. Settle for less. Who can say? Once more unto the breach. Hideout. Running towards my problems. Possession. The light of two minds. Encore. Armstrong and Holly. QED. The brick shit houses, baby. Yeah, nice and, or uh God damn it. Nia Sian? God damn it. I can't remember what it was. Thank you for the sub. <sighs> Spooky. No way. Sweet.
don't sound like so. Oh, I suck. Nah. Just need to build up your calluses, that's all. Yeah. All right, come on. Is this it? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh. I'm gonna start guessing. You want to spoil your surprise now? Oh no. Is it a dinosaur? Stop trying to guess. I ain't telling you. Oh. All right. Is it an elephant? <sighs> Is it a convertible? You're not gonna guess. Is it a puppy? Is it a lot of kittens? You mean a litter? What's a litter? A bunch of kittens. Why wouldn't you call it just a bunch of kittens? I don't know what... It's called a litter. It's so dumb. It's not a litter of kittens. Okay, okay. Hot air balloon. More walking, less talking. <laughs> All right. Let's just, let's just keep pushing. Keep pushing them so that, you know, I, all right, I'm going to be annoying about this for just a second. <laughs> I think it's totally plausible that like the idea that she'd be surprised is bad. They've had way too many surprises in their lives that have been bad. So this is all, you know, this seems like it's fine, but. I certainly feel a bit of tension right now. Like every time we've had like a moment where there's, we don't know what's coming. It usually turns into something awful. So trying to guess what it is, takes some of the lack of control out of it. it makes it maybe a little bit more controllable. I mean, even though Joel's safe, right? Like we're willing to go on this journey here with Joel because he's, he's safe, but Jesus, man, surprises just don't go well in this world. So I look at this as us being basically in Ellie's mind right now. Interesting to see what kind of memory this is. Mind your step. I got it. Ah! <laughs> what is wrong with you? You should see your face right now. What if I drown? Now you're not gonna drown. You gotta work on that confidence, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, keep laughing, old man. See what happens. It's this way. The worst. She can swim. Swim is getting better. Remember now, don't just flail about. You got to. the water with your whole arm. Blah blah blah. Glad to know I'm getting through. <laughs> hey, come here. Take a look at this. See that deer over there? Where? Just through there, look. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Looks like. <laughs> How's that feel? Uh, refreshing. Yeah, it's not nice getting pushed in, is it? Well, actually, we need to swim through this part anyway. I got you back. You're angry and upset. I am very angry and upset. Now, come on. <laughs> Learning is anxiety provoking. If you want to build a skill, particularly a survival skill like this, it has to be scaffolded. But you also can't avoid the scary parts of it forever. So Joel pushing her in here and being there as her secure base while she learns how to do this is huge. 
This is why good teachers are important, and it's why it's really good for teachers to establish some level of emotional connection with their students, because Joel is the only person, probably, that she feels safe enough to jump into this water after and practice these skills, because he's taught her how to do this, and because she knows that he's got her back if something goes wrong, and it's just enough to push her past her comfort zone and learn this. So, I mean, this is actually really cool. And as a result, it's a hugely intimate bonding experience. Adversity on one's own terms and learning skills like that during it can be really great. Dive under here. Take a deep breath. Yeah, I got this. See, but what this does is it also attaches some of it, it helps Ellie externalize some of her confidence. Like she's gonna she's gonna see Joel as the reason why she's able to do these things. So if you're Joel in this situation, you also have to help remind her that she's doing a lot of this on her own. It's not just because of him, it's because she's learned the skill. Is it my sixth grade history teacher wanting to apologize for being a massive dick? I beg your pardon? My friend and I would argue whenever he called the Fireflies terrorists. We got a lot of detention. You know, you really need to stop letting people rile you up. It's hard when they're dicks. Point still stands. Right, got another dive over here. Where are you taking me? By the way, Joel pushing her in there, this very likely wouldn't be the first foray into swimming. When it comes to learning theory, which, by the way, if anybody wants to learn more about learning theory, I have an entire video about it on YouTube where I did a full lecture about it. But you don't... The scaffolding is bringing a person up to a certain level of skill, allowing them to have more autonomy in their ability to do it and removing the instruction and then inching it up. And so you're constantly helping a person move past their skill level, but you're doing it in a very systematic way and the idea is that you want to go from having as much teacher assistance as possible to the least teacher assistance as possible so if you go to teach a kid how to swim and you just shove them into a pool you are more likely to traumatize them than help them learn how to swim because they don't have the skills yet to be able to navigate the adversity of that situation is it a potentially realistic situation where a kid could fall into a water yes but that's not the way to teach him Pushing a child into the pool should be part of the scaffolding process where they've built up enough of the skills that being in that situation is only just a little bit past their comfort zone, not a fully traumatic experience. So what this shows by Ellie's response to this is that Joel has been working with her for quite some time on this. This was not a one-off. Him shoving her in the water is something she conceptualizes as another step in the process, not as, what the fuck did you just do? which is a very, very important distinction to make when you're talking about learning, but you learning happens with anxiety. I am aware that people throw babies into water to help them learn. Sometimes that's for the exposure of what it's like to have water, but like pushing a kid who's got language and all of that stuff into the water like that, generally not a good thing. Instructions unclear pushed Ellie off the scaffolding. <laughs> Is it a uh, new pair of sneakers? How many of those do you have? Not enough. <laughs> Help me up, buddy. There. Okay. Fuck it. I'm done guessing. Well, good. But, like, is it a massive comic book collection? No, wait. A new DVD collection? Yes. That's 
Which one? Just... yes. How about laser discs? I heard that's a thing. Where are we going, Joel? Holy shit, Joel. We're here. Oh my god, it is a dinosaur! And it is. Joel! Surprise. Holy shit. Oh, it's a motherfucking dinosaur. What? King of the tyrant lizards. That's a big boy. Farming ration, farming rotation blows. I don't get why people ask for this assignment. Note to self, talk to Maria about how early I can sign up for patrol training. Dina and I found this cool old campground today. She said kids used to go there in the summers for fun. We found all these art supplies. She cut colored paper and made some crowns for us while it rained outside. It was a good day. Joel said he's taking me on a camping trip next week for my birthday. He found something he says I'll love. He's acting very proud of himself. Smug old fogey. Cat sat next to me at the mo at movie night. Our elbows kept touching. I think she was doing it on purpose. Maybe not. Probably not. Dina made me a crown for my birthday. She went back to that camp and got all this paper. It's pretty great. And she drew the dinosaur. Badass. Damn, Joel. This is badass, brother. Wyoming Museum of Science and History. Oh, how did you find this place? <laughs> Maria. She, uh, she told me about it. Figured it'd be right up your alley. Figured right. This might be the first time, certainly that I can think of, where Joel is taking care of Ellie in a way that isn't survival-based. This is Joel taking care of Ellie just because she's awesome. And because that's what he does. And how awesome that must feel for him to have reached a point where he can take care of her in like more of a real way not in a way that's dictated by circumstance it's your birthday i know about this thing i know you well enough to know what you like let me take you out and show you how special you are and let's let's do some cool stuff like what a cool bonding experience now we get to build intimacy that goes beyond survival. Uh, it's amazing. So how meaningful of an experience this must be for Ellie to see this guy who has kept her alive, even though she's competent in and of herself, now go out of his way to show her that he knows her. Doesn't just know how to keep her alive, knows her. Huge from a caregiving standpoint. Absolutely huge. What's this? Uh, it's a book? It's a dinosaur book. Okay. All right. What have we here? Oh, man. You want to try it on? I do not. Hmm. Your loss. Hey, no kidding, Joel. Come on. Come on. How good do I look? Oh, man. Look how happy she is. She is thrilled. Oh. 
Look at those talons. That is a velociraptor. Actually, it's a D. Dionanicus. Mm, pretty sure these are velociraptors. Yeah. I mean, at least that's what they call them in this movie I saw. Hmm. <laughs> oh, man. So, I get a sense, at least so far, that this is a good memory. And before we keep going into this, I want to put what's happening right now in context. I want to sort of think about this moment as being a glimpse into what's going on in Ellie's head as she's sitting in the movie theater, having just learned what she learned about Dina on the journey that she's on. She plays that song, and then immediately we are brought into this memory. And as I've mentioned before in previous streams, Ellie has internalized what we would call an object that is Joel. He has a symbolic representation of him internally. That symbolic representation of him is one that is safe, is reliable, takes care of her, and now we're finding out knows her better than anybody else she's ever met in her entire life, even people who have claimed to care about her. He knows more about her beyond the fact that she's immune, so it helps diversify her identity as somebody who loves dinosaurs, who's rambunctious, somebody who maybe likes surprises despite not letting that on. That's a powerful memory to draw upon if you are in an ex extremely adverse experience. We seek proximity to our caregivers in times of distress. Ellie is at a time of distress sitting in that movie theater and she has had her idea of Dina kind of blown apart here. And so she goes inward and she's paying attention and drawing strength from her internal representation of Joel and she's doing that through a very explicit and meaningful memory she has with him. All of us do this to some extent if we've had a reliable and consistent caregiver in our lives. And we often do this with an ideal version of that symbol. So whether this is actually how this happened, we don't necessarily know, but this is how Ellie remembers it. And that's more important in the moment that she's in, in the theater. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this. Oh, hello. Sorry, the dinosaurs are busy right now. What are you doing? Oh, wait. One of the dinosaurs is here. <laughs> Joel, it's for you. Very funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Did you get it? It's because you're old. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Now, this would also be a pretty complicated experience, I would imagine, for Joel. Because on one hand, I imagine it's very meaningful for him to be able to take Ellie through this experience. At the same time, it probably is going to bring up some memory of Sarah, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But as much as this is a shared experience with Ellie, it's a missed shared experience with his daughter. So there's gonna be probably some conflict in him where maybe he can't fully bring himself to be enjoying this moment as much as he may want to. Now he may be able to, he may have grieved the da his daughter's death, as best he could and this may really be about him and ellie but i think if you're joel this kind of moment is probably something you never expected you were ever going to happen or was ever going to happen and now it's happening and that's going to stir up stuff from him and it's not his it's not ellie's job to take care of him in that though she may notice it and try and that's okay my hope would be that joel would sort of notice that and pay attention to that for himself as we go through this because it would be completely reasonable to experience All right, let's go in here. I want to I want to know more about these dinosaurs. Platinum Research Center of Science and Math Scholarship Merit Society. Man, look at how much freaking work went into this. Compsognathus. Compsognathus. 
Whew. It's a big name for little guys. Yeah, they'd swarm you. Did you see that in a movie, too? Actually, yeah. But a different one. See, there's a sequel. Wasn't as good. <laughs> you don't think Joel's trying to replace Sarah with Ellie? Absolutely not. No. No way. Joel understands that Ellie and Sarah are separate. Now, Ellie may fill some level of emotional void for Joel and may help him rediscover his desire as a caretaker, but there ain't no way in hell that Ellie is being seen as a replacement for Sarah. And I can promise you that pretty much any parent that would ever be in this position would tell you there is nobody that is ever going to replace the kid that you had that died. This is a meaningful relationship for Joel. This is something that allows him to relive some of these things and it allows him to sort of move on and grieve a little bit through this. But Ellie is Ellie's as close to a daughter as he can have. But even if he was to conceptualize Ellie as a daughter, she's not a replacement daughter. She's just another daughter. Sarah may have died physically, but Sarah doesn't die in his heart. Even as if he wants to suppress it. Giants of the past. Step back through time to over 65 million years ago when dinosaurs and other prehistoric giants roamed the earth. In our giant's pavilion, you'll find full skeletons on display. See how you'd measure up next to our own Triceratops, Winnie. And don't forget to look up. There are pterodactyls circling. Afterward, head to our annexes to get hands on hands on with the fossils and footprints, feathers, and more. Badass. <laughs> Joel, look. <laughs> that is a hat on a dinosaur. It's called a hatosaur. Ah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sitting on your nose, maybe not. Maybe not the right one. Maybe you. Tiny head. Hey, is this gonna be a thing? Please don't let it be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, come on, he looks good. Fine, Joel. Maybe I'll stop if you wear the hat. Hey, Joel. Ellie. <sighs> don't you dare take it off. My birthday, my rules. <sighs> <laughs> Looking good, Joel. He pulls it off. Triceratops. Triceratops means three horned face. You would not want to be on the business end of that horn. No, Joel, I would not. Ceratops. This is one I recognize. <laughs> Joel, you don't gotta be a hero, buddy. It's all right. You can say you don't know what these things are. You can you can be in the wonderment of it with me. That's fine. Whoa, this one's brain was the size of a walnut. No, no way. Looks like you two have something in common. Oh, <laughs> good one. I like how Joel can dish it. Ellie's going to dish it. Joel's going to dish it back. Brachiosaurus ate 600 pounds of plants each day. Whew. Imagine the poops. Yeah, there's one scene where uh, actually one of the guys said, that's a big mound of shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is this movie and when can we see it? Tell you what. When we get back to Jackson, movie night. I say, do we have a copy of Jurassic Park on file? Gallimimus's name means chicken mimic. I, who names these? Scientists. Well, they're dumb. 
Doesn't that sentence hit a little different in 2021? <laughs> well, let's pump the brakes on that one, Ellie. Ooh, there's a 50 cent word. The Dime Trodon was an apex predator. It's an apex predator. The most badass predator? Huh. Pretty short for that. Wait, were you talking about me? Uh huh. I can imagine that it's immensely meaningful for Ellie to have Joel engage with her in a way where she gets to teach him a thing or two. Like that, that can be a really meaningful moment for a kid where an adult shows some vulnerability, maybe even if they're faking it. Kids are generally not impressed by adults being know-it-alls. Like it can be really good in the sense that like you, you, they'll look at an adult and be like, I know my dad knows everything and it's awesome. And that's fine. But when an adult shows that they don't necessarily know something and they can learn from a kid, particularly a kid who finds them to be a very meaningful person in their life, oh man, that can go such a long way to boosting a kid's confidence. They see that they have influence that they can teach that if they learn things, not everybody knows things. Adults become a little bit more realistic to them. They feel a sense of confidence that they have something to contribute. It's pretty badass. So if you've got a little kid running around that's constantly trying to show you things that they find interesting and teach you a little bit, maybe about something they're interested in or a hobby they have, even if you don't give a shit about it, you showing even a little bit of interest in it and acting like you're learning something from them, can make their day. If you're an adult that constantly just shuts that shit down and is basically like, yeah, I already know that. I already know that. I already know that, you stupid kid. Like, even if you don't say that explicitly, that's the vibe you have. That can be devastating for a kid because they learn that nothing they have can, to say is a contribution and why would you ever speak up? And it can sometimes foster social anxiety. So be mindful of that, friends. Sounds like a pill. Another trading card. What? The Nighthawk. Oh, cool. What you got there? These uh, superhero cards. Seems like they were popular. I think Sarah was into those for a while. What was the little creature thing? I forget. When a freshly minted Air Force recruit found himself caught in a skirmish between Spark Aerobots and the Society of Champions, his quick thinking ended up saving the day. With his arms and legs wounded in battle, Dr. Stem created a set of energy wings for his arms and energy blades for his shoes, allowing him to cover both land and sky at absurd speeds. Together with his loyal greyhound, Ezio, a small town kid known as the Nighthawk scours the world for evildoers, always ready to dive back into action. I was wondering, what could the effect be if a parent were constantly sarcastic to a child while the child wouldn't understand sarcasm yet? It's a bad thing to do. Being sarcastic with kids who don't under... Sarcasm is an abstract concept. It requires a really deep knowledge of not just communication in general, but of the person you are communicating with. Sarcasm is inherently a mixed message, and the reason that we often find it funny or meaningful is because we're able to make that abstract connection as adults. Kids that can't do that often get intensely confused and when kids get confused and they can't read the difference between verbal and nonverbal, they're often going to operate off the nonverbal and they're going to personalize it. And they're probably going to personalize it in a way that you don't even intend for them to personalize it as. So you got to be careful with sarcasm with kids because generally they're not going to read it that way. They're, they're going to read it as something that's like very confusing and then somebody that they care about or is meaningful to them is hard to read and then that's anxiety provoking and they don't know how to communicate back it just creates kind of a snowball of issues i tend to suggest that people avoid sarcasm with kids uh, or use it in very small doses until the kid is able to actually conceptually understand what sarcasm is you generally want to speak to kids as concretely as possible Sarcasm is the opposite of that. Uh, 
I like your hat, Joel. All right, enough of that. Enough of that silly business. Let's go upstairs. Where's the Leo Pluridon? Velociraptor. Joel, this is uh, the one you were talking about, the Velociraptor? So small. Well, don't touch the movies, I guess. Iguanodon, Allosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look at that thing. Look how thick this one's skull is. Kind of looks like Tommy. I'm telling him you said that. Please don't. Catch it in the right light. Boom. Tommy. Kind of looks like Cubone. It was, Shelves. Whoa. This one looks like a bird. Well, actually, paleontologists believe the birds were descended from dinosaurs. Well, excuse me, Mr. Professor. I happen to know a thing or two. From a movie. Keep going. <laughs> hey, now I get a hat. Hell yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Did you go to museums a lot? Yeah. Yeah, Sarah loved them. I swear that girl dragged me to every damn museum in Texas. Uh, see? So, very meaningful experience for Joel, too. This is super reparative. I think about that, right? Like... He is a parent who lost a child who loved going to museums. And if he's trying to avoid those emotions that get stirred up, Joel is going to avoid museums like the plague. Because if he walks into a museum, his daughter's walking right with him into it, no matter whether he wants it to be the case or not. So for Joel to actively seek this out and be the one that brought Ellie here is huge for him. Huge for him. That is some restorative processing. He's taking control of this, and it's very vulnerable because not only is he coming here by himself, which would already be super hard, he's coming here with a girl who is roughly the same age his daughter was when she died. That is, like, hauntingly close. So Joel remaining as measured as he is and open to this process and really taking this in stride and making sure not to be in Ellie's face about the fact that he's thinking about Sarah while he's here is huge because if, if Joel was overly in Ellie's face about Sarah, it would mean that Ellie would realize that this isn't so much about Ellie for him as it is for Sarah, as it is about Sarah. Now, it may be more about Ellie than it is about Sarah, but at the very least, he's not putting Ellie into a position to have to question that. This gets to be for Ellie about Ellie and about her interests and about the fact that Joel brought her here. And for Joel, this is about a reparative experience that he had with his daughter who he's lost and with this new kid who he is entrusted with taking care of and basically sees as another daughter. So the parallel processing of this for them is psychologically is huge. And it makes this moment super meaningful, like super meaningful. And it's awesome that we get to walk through it with the characters. Changing it to something he used to do with Sarah to something he can now enjoy with Ellie. Sure, right? And Sarah's here in spirit. 
This doesn't mean that Sarah's not here. It just means she's here in a different way. How would you help somebody that's fearful of a fear of needles? Uh, you go through a process of what's called systematic desensitization. Which is part of exposure therapy. Oh, uh, you gonna put the hat on it? Joel, put the hat on it. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I see the appeal. <laughs> Told you. Oh, that's big. Oh, what a meaningful thing to do. What a meaningful thing to do. Oh, man. That might be the most meaningful thing you do for Ellie here, buddy. Oh. Extinction. It's still not really understood what caused the extinction of the, the mass extinction of the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, most scientists agree that it was likely triggered by a large asteroid hitting the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico over 65 million years ago. An estimated something to 50.3 miles in diameter, the Chicalub impactor created a hole 62 miles wide and 19 miles deep in the Earth. The shock caused by the impact would have triggered a mega tsunami over 300 feet tall. Volcanic eruptions and earthquakes worldwide. A cloud of extremely hot ash and steam would have spread from the crater in less than a second after impact, destroying everything in its path. Anything living outside of the initial impact zone would deal with emission dust and debris covering the earth for years or even decades. The dust would have blocked out the sun's rays, slowing photosynthesis and dramatically cooling the Earth's surface. <laughs> F's in chat for the dinosaurs. I did, Ninja. Ooh. Did you know this was here? Oh, you don't like it. Um, we can head back. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Oh, wow. As if dinosaurs weren't impressive enough. Are you kidding me? Does Joel know Ellie or does Joel know Ellie? Oh. Hey, Joel, can you name all the planets? <clears throat> My very educated mother just served us nice pizzas. Uh, did you just have a stroke? My Mercury, very Venus, mother Mars. Oh, okay. I get it. That's pretty cool. This is badass. I love that it still lights up. Oh. Hey, Joel. Guess what the first animal to go to space was? I don't have to guess. That was a monkey. No, it was fruit flies. Yeah, in 1947. It was to see radiation exposure at high altitudes. They lived through it. That gum girl, you are smart. Thanks. Did they become super fly? What? No. She doesn't know who Spider Man is, Joel. Whoa. Tell me another fun fact. Hmm. Astronauts say the moon smells like gunpowder. That is a fun fact. Well, wait, how would they. Oh, well, they would. Take the moon samples back inside and smell them later, I guess. Amazing that these are still intact like this. Okay, what's next? You tell me. Uh, quiz me. <laughs> I don't know. Who was the first person in space? Oh, it's easy. 
Yuri Gagarin. Gagarin? Is that Gagarin? I don't know how you say it. I've only read it, so. Anyway. He flew to space on April 12th, 1961. Color me impressed. How many books have you read about this? Come on, Joel. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Why don't you tell me what you like about it? Hmm. Um, I don't know. People in your time, they had it easy. <laughs> I guess, relatively speaking, sure. I mean, they didn't need to go to space, but they did it anyway. It's ballsy. <laughs> ballsy. All right, kiddo. Now I get it. Yo. That line from Joel is the best possible deflection he could ever give to Ellie. See, she's still a kid. And kids, when interested in a thing, but not sure whether it's okay or cool or acceptable to like a thing, will look to their caregivers to see what their reactions are about the thing that they're interested in. And oftentimes are hoping that when they talk about it with their caregiver, that that caregiver will be as excited about it as they are, which oftentimes is not the case. So Ellie turns and sort of says, like, you know, what do you think? Isn't this incredible? Joel is not, probably doesn't care. Instead of making it about him, he turns it back to her and makes it about her and says, you tell me what you like about it, which tells her two big things. The biggest one being, I care about you. I care about why you like this stuff. That whether I like this stuff ultimately doesn't matter because I'm invested in this because you are invested in this and I think that's cool. That is possibly the most meaningful thing that he could ever say to her and the second thing that it provides is an opportunity for her to engage with why she is interested with it, not just why others or media has told her she should be interested in it. She gets to develop an original thought about that. So those two things happening simultaneously are huge, and it happens in just one little line. It's awesome. Freaking love it, man. Hey, did you know that the heat shields of space shuttles are made of sand? I did not. I thought it was some kind of thick rubber. Nope. Sand. You're welcome. <laughs> Want another one? Shoot. Astronauts drink their own pee filtered but you know <clears throat> well, we gotta do what we gotta do i guess yeah i guess that's a less fun fact yeah that would be weird even if i knew it was filtered that would be very odd for me you know how many times we've been to the moon uh twice six times are you sure yeah i'm sure I'm gonna make it seven. I never liked sand. It's coarse and it gets everywhere. One day. Oh, it's badass. It's the Lego set that's behind me. Gaia says is definitely cool. Look at this thing. Oh, fuck yeah. Where's the steering wheel? Rovers don't use steering wheels. They use joysticks. Huh. Hang on. Is this the real one? I'm considering they left the real ones on the moon. 
I was saying no. I love that Joel's willing to not know everything here. He doesn't, like, it's just, oh, man. Big kudos for Joel. Oh. Mercury spacesuit. Let's go. How does it smell in there? Like space. And dust. Another thing I want to point out about why this is such a meaningful experience. This is really the first time in the entire series as well that we've gotten to see Ellie just be a kid. Like she feels more kid-like here than she did at any point in The Last of Us 1. And obviously she's older for all the parts leading up to this. She gets to just be curious and excited and engage with something she cares about. And this is happening in a world where generally that's just not possible for her because she's constantly having to survive for her entire purpose in life is to be the cure for all mankind. You know, by being immune. And so we get to see her just be a kid for a second. And I think that's really refreshing because it can be pretty disheartening to see kids have to live as adults. And we treat kids as if they're little adults. When you're in a survival situation like this, it's totally understandable. But like letting kids be kids and be excited about things like this and curious and share the things that they know about something that they're interested in is just so unbelievably meaningful. And this opportunity for her to do this, I, I, it's, it's just so huge. So huge. I like this helmet better. Gemini spacesuit. Yeah. Launch entry suit. So badass. No way. After you. Watch your hand. Just... <laughs> Happy birthday, kiddo. What is this? This is a thing that took a mighty effort to find. Take it.
<laughs> You're welcome, kiddo. Well, what do you say we uh, keep looking around, huh? Yeah, I guess. Oh, man. Oh. Whoo. That. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a meaningful moment. Isn't that kind of what we were hoping for through the entire Last of Us 1? For them to have a moment like that. That's the kind of thing, man, that sticks with you. Oh, you know, a, a person meaningful to you who's gotten you through so much shit. Being able to show that they know you like that. Oh. This may be legitimately the... I mean, I don't know that I can think of another time in a video game where I've ever cried because of the video game. Like, this one. Oh. Naughty Dog really nailed that one. This is how, as a caregiver, you help create a meaningful internal object for the people you take care of. is to do something like this, to like make that effort. And Ellie knows that this was big for Joel to do. There's no way she doesn't know that. And this was, I mean, say what you want about Joel. Whatever you think about him is fine. It doesn't change the fact that him doing this for Ellie is unbelievably meaningful. And all of us would be lucky to have somebody do something like this to show the depth to which they understand who we are to make this meaningful experience for her in a world where this just wouldn't generally even be remotely possible this is disney world times a million for her and she'll never forget it and again it this is what she's drawing on right now in the theater as she sits there reflecting back on this. This is how strongly internalized Joel is. How meaningful he is to Ellie's lived experience. This moment and this feeling is what was ripped away from her when she watched him die. This. Her rage makes a lot of sense when you take this and you put it into context. So that said, I want to point out one cool little dynamic between Joel and Ellie that I think in some ways she picked up from him. They don't say thank you. They just know that the other person is thankful. Joel never said thank you when Ellie picked up that gun and shot the guy that was on top of him and back way back in Boston. Ellie doesn't say thank you here. But Joel and Ellie in both of those situations knew that they were thankful and said, you're welcome. I also love that Joel asks her, how did I do? Because I actually think Joel probably went into this a little bit anxious about how Ellie was going to feel about it. 
and he wants to make sure that he took care of her in this moment because again that is at Joel's core of what is important to him is that the people around him are taken care of even if it's at his expense so to hear her say that this was super meaningful to her to say are you fucking kidding me probably means just as much to him as this moment means to her This is a real moment you draw upon for strength in an adverse time. For those of you that like Harry Potter, this is the moment that Ellie would be thinking about when she tries to shoot a Patronus out of her wand. It's a cool moment, man. Quite possibly one of my favorite moments in all on in all video games. I, I I have never felt as emotionally connected in a video game to a moment as I do to that one. It's it's absolutely incredible stuff by Naughty Dog. Thanks, buddy. Look how proud he is. He's so proud of himself. It's awesome. That's a part of him that he probably never thought he'd ever access again. Ever. And he's not experiencing it with anger and distance and coldness. He's not shoving it down. He is living in this moment in a way that he probably hasn't since long before this happened. Thank you, Joel. There's more museum stuff over there. Yeah, I never checked out that building. Well, let's go. And just how do you plan on getting yourself over there? Like this? This much grief. Get down here. No. Hey, whose birthday is it? You can't keep doing that. I want a good splash. We've got more exploring to do. Geronimo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> She brings Joel back to life, that's for sure. Hey, who's being there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll open the door for you. Come on, we can't chicken out now. Okay, and so we're back to... Y'all feel some tension right now? Because I do. Now we're back to the reality of the world we live in. And you can see Joel. Joel's like, oh, dude, ah, I didn't check this out. I didn't look at this. We, we, the, we're not in Wyoming in 2013 anymore. We're in Wyoming 2016 post-pandemic where who knows what's in an unknown building. And he's like, look at him. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. I, and he's the adult in the room. So he's like, uh, uh, so now we are at the tension between connection and survival. We're watching Joel's defenses break down in front of us because he cares about Ellie. He wants to protect Ellie and her emotional well-being now even more than her physical well-being and he's potentially putting her in danger because of it all of a sudden we have this dynamic again just like that and i'm sitting here like oh jesus ellie 
Joel, you gotta say no. I don't know what's in there. I have no idea what's in there. But like, ah. All right, I guess, yeah, sorry. It's like 20, yeah, 20, uh, I don't know. Not 2016, like maybe uh, 2026 okay, or something like that. bad this. news. There's shit blocking the door. Well, see if you can find me another way in. I'll, I'll walk around the outside. Okay, be safe. You be safe. There are dinosaurs around! Oh, man. See, now, Ellie, if you're Ellie here... <sighs> See, here's the thing, is if you're Joel here, I really think the best thing he could have done before he pushed her up into that window is said, look, I know that this was fun. I love this. I really want you to just grapple onto the feeling that you have of how whimsical and wonderful this was. If you go in this building, we have to shut that off. We have to shut that off. It's the reality of the situation. He's got to be the adult here. He is the one that's in charge of hitting the reset button on this and basically saying, as soon as you go through that window, you're in survival mode again. If we find out that it's clear, we'll have fun and we'll do our thing. But until we know it's clear, your ass has got to be back in that mentality. And if you can't get there, tell me, because we're going to turn around and we're going to leave. If you can get there, and then I trust you to go through that window. That would be the ideal thing for Joel to say here. And he doesn't say that. And so Ellie is still kind of in this, like, whimsical mindset. Uh-oh, watch out. There's dinosaurs. And we're just kind of ignoring the fact that, like, we are walking into an unknown building where we've done this so many times before. And there's a bunch of shit in here that we do not want to run into. Hopefully there's not. Hopefully this is fine and fun, but oh, <laughs> right on cue. Ooh. Stay strong, buddy. Hmm. This guy needed a hug. A jarring snapback to reality, man. Four soldiers at the gate. The last one cried. Oh, shit. The woman we tortured choked on her own blood. I don't feel compelled to read exhibits anymore. Kid who ran into the blast. I couldn't stop him. Yikes, man. I don't know if this is some, like, uh, primitive form of, like, trauma journaling. But, oh, boy. Is no light. We wanted to end suffering. 
We wanted to restore humanity. Each time we were sacrificed part of ourselves, our leaders kept saying, it'll be worth it. Now we're disbanded, with nothing to show for our sins. I thought coming here might reignite something, some purpose. My parents loved bringing me here. One of my earliest memories from before the outbreak, before all the cruelty and savagery. Those memories just made me angrier. I don't want to be in this world anymore. I can't look at the person I've become. And he shot himself. As evidenced by a bullet hole there. Splatter behind him. The fact that we found gun ammo. I don't have enough alcohol to make a med kit, so... Let's, I guess we're going toward the noise. We're going to hope it's Joel. <sighs> Stupid fake animals. Jesus, look at the way their eyes light. Oh my god. Would that happen if they were taxidermied? Anybody know? Because that'd be really spooky if a taxidermied wolf would still have those flashes in their eyes like that. Jesus. Oh, shit. Some animal. Well, let's get a move on. I want to get a fire going before it gets too dark. Come on. Dokie. Well, and we're back. By the way, I want to use this as an opportunity to say that if you are watching me live on Twitch right now, thank you all for being here. Chatters, lurkers, and VOD watchers it means a lot to me that you come out and watch this as it's happening. I appreciate all of you very much. If you are watching this VOD on YouTube, I'd like to also say how much I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting what I do and for watching this run. I love reading your comments, so feel free to re leave comments down below. I'll respond to them when I can. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you for supporting the stream. I know you can't be here to interact with me directly, but I do want you to know that I, I appreciate you just as much as the folks that come out here and watch me live. If you don't follow me on TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter, follow me on those because that's where we post the psychological concepts as they get illustrated. We basically throw out TikToks and Instagram posts like once a day. So if you want to have a nice short form version of all the cool mental health conversations we have as a result of playing this game, those are the places to go. And finally, if you like what I do and you think it's awesome and you want to see me do lots more of it, tell people about what I do. Share, share these playthroughs tell people there's a therapist that's sitting here analyzing the shit out of games that have a lot of depth to them because i hope to do this for a long time and your support is what makes it possible so i appreciate y'all very much all right dino where'd you go 
Let's find you. you fix it? It was a loose connection. Antenna. They found our mess at the school. Good. This guy, Owen, he went AWOL. Maybe Tommy got to him. Maybe. What about her? Nothing yet. Unit Romeo, you are requested at site two. Repeat, you are requested at site two. Confirm. So, the numbers are locations. The TV station we were at, that's six. There's a lot of chatter coming out of two, so I'm assuming that's their home base. Sure. Okay, I can guess. Uh, if this is seven, twelve's all the way over here. I guess it's somewhere in this neighborhood. Oh, crest. Okay. Get him. You keep tracking them, okay? Yeah, okay. Wait. Give me your hand. It's for good luck. I don't believe in luck. I do. Crest. Is this the right place? Definitely the right place. Okie dokie. Be Tommy. <sighs> Shit. Back to reality, baby. Sometimes people just need a night to cool off. And I'm going to use that interaction between Dina and Ellie to say, if you have a rule in your relationship that you never go to bed angry, you may want to reconsider that rule. It's okay to go to bed angry. It's okay if you need to sleep in a separate room for one evening. In fact, sometimes that's better because sometimes it means that when you come back the next day, you have a chance to reflect 
you have a chance to kind of sit with what's going on it gives your brain your nervous system your endocrine system all a chance to cool off so that when you come back to the conversation the next day you're not quite as hot as you were when you were having the interaction a lot of people think that if they go to bed angry that somehow that like that means something terrible for the relationship and mostly what that means is that you just haven't built the distress tolerance to deal with the fact that there can be frustration and conflict in a relationship and it doesn't have to mean that it's over or anything more than just you're having conflict so i really recommend folks reevaluate that expectation in their relationship if that's something they've solidified as a rule because sometimes you're just not going to resolve the conflict if you're tired and it may actually make it worse because you start saying dumb shit or you start kind of bending over backwards on both fronts because you just want to go to bed. Sleep in a separate room. Sleep in the bed while you're angry with each other. Do what you got to do to take care of yourself and come back to it the next day. That's how you build a sense of reliability in your relationship. And not every fight is going to break it. And you'll just come back when you have cooler heads. And that's okay. That's what Dina and Ellie did. And look how much better their interaction is the next day. And they start working together, and now Ellie's off to go find Tommy. Make sure we're stocked up on stuff. It's 73 supplements. Thank you for the reminder. Faster prone movement? That seems useful. Actually, we're still doing pretty good on supplies, so. <sighs> Okie dokie. More rules that must be followed. Exactly, Neuro. Yep. It's good to know when to disengage as much as it's good to know when to engage. Boris Legasso. Isn't Legasov the name of the guy from Chernobyl? Am I remembering that correctly? Happy birthday, Dad. Pretty good. Best clicker killer in the whole QZ. Damn. know that I actually need the stability on this. I actually think that like ammo capacity and like the revolver and stuff is going to be the better option here. Uh, replace the hammer spring, increase fire weight, weight rate. All right, let's get rid of this sway. Nice. Good. Good shit. 
Let's roll. And this is why you explore all the buildings. Because you never know what kind of cool shit you're going to find. on pretty much everything, so. Okay. How do I get up there? Oh, get down, Ellie. There's too many of these assholes. Hold on, Tommy. A little loud there, Ellie, but whatever. There we go, get some pills. All about that. Another note. I love reading these. Boris. What did we get ourselves into? The wolves were supposed to make things better. The military hoarded all the resources, controlled what we said, told us what job to do, and so for the wolf and so far the wolves are doing the same exact thing. And now they're talking about moving everyone to the stadium? What? I grew up in this town. I survived the outbreak in this town. I'm not moving to some refugee camp where some asshole tells me where I can and can't wipe my own ass. This is my home. We need a plan. We can't settle for the same thing. Ooh. That's what we were talking about in the last stream. The WLF doesn't sound much different from Fedra. They're just people who want to have control and be in the position of power for the same process. Also, Dauntless, what's up, buddy? We got a lot of folks buying snacks tonight, man. Good night, madame. Boris. Wolves broke into Fedra HQ and found the enlisted rosters. I heard they're starting to knock on doors, looking for soldiers. I'm not going to be executed in my own town. After things calm down, I'll try to return with a new name. Couldn't find Alfie. He put his food on your back porch. In case I don't come back, give him lots of scratches for me. He always loved you and Sophia. Yolanda. I'm guessing he must be a dog. <laughs> All right, we'll check out this one last place. See if there's any good stuff in here, aside from rats. Oh, a locked door. Go figure. <laughs> Fuck the WLF. And there's always going to be a group that works against the group that worked against the group. What do I do here? How do I... We just started. I shouldn't have said that to her. She's going to treat me differently now. I know it. I wish my mask didn't fucking break. When did she figure out she was pregnant? Where were we a couple weeks ago? Boise? I remember her throwing up at Kennewick. This is too much. It all fucking makes sense. The throwing up, how tired she's been. What the fuck, Dina? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you trust me? But did you trust her? What should I do? It's too late to turn back. Just gotta end this thing as quickly as possible. 
That sounds about right, Ellie. All right, how do we get how do we get into this building? You have presented me with a puzzle, naughty dog, that I must solve. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Like there's a window up there. Gotta be some way to get in there. Oh, there we go. Ah, gross. I like this increased crawl speed. Better be something good in here for all that trouble. Oh, full, 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 full. Oh, all right, we got a couple of gears. That's fine. So quiet. Oh, this is dumb. We should be pushing in. We hold the perimeter until we hear otherwise. Keep an eye out in case he comes this way. I got some shit. Get in there. Okay, girl. Oh boy. You think this guy's connected to the girl from the school? Coincidence if they weren't. I hate these small groups. Big groups, it's a straight fight. These loners, they could be hiding anywhere. Here he is. Let's find him and get back home. This dog can sniff my scent? You've got to be kidding me. Got anything? I got nothing. Let's go.
I'm gonna have to take these guys out, man. I don't know that I have an option. I'm gonna have to, dude. I'm gonna have to kill dogs. I'm gonna have to do it. I just don't. I just don't see a way out of this. These guys are absolutely gonna shoot me. Oh boy, forgive me. I'll take the building. Where'd that dog go? Oh, jeez. I'll check the building. She's got something. <laughs> what you smell? Got her! <laughs> <By the car! laughs> See, this would have made so much noise. Fuck these WLF. It won't open. Find a way around. Go, go. Oh, God. Was intense. I mean, those dogs were set to attack me, man. Like, this is just, I, what are you supposed to do, you know? Or get shot trying to open that door, you know, like, Oh, good. So, this is just going to roll down this hill when I go to jump on it. No matter where I put it. So, let's see if there was anything else in there. That may be of use. Hmm.
maybe this is flat enough. Go, 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 go. There we go. Oh, thank God. What's this? What the fuck is this? Some kind of bomb? Trap mines explode when enemies get near them. Oh. Well, okay then. here no come get me assholes huh an actual tattoo shop Hey, makes me wonder how Ellie got hers. Uh, you know our hearts will always be with Hillcrest, but after Sophia's shouting, we've decided to head to the stadium with the others. We've got our own kids to think about. The Brandmans. P.S. Saw Boris a couple hours ago. We tried talking to him, but he seemed off. Please talk to him. I hope you guys will join us. Down here. Whatever what I need this for. There's a safe in here, I guess, at least. But yikes. Looks like they've been locked in here for years. Why aren't they clickers then? No safe key here. When's your next find a therapist session? How do I apply? Looking to get into it. What's up, Grandma Mitch? Uh, DM me on Discord. I was a code that was conspicuously placed somewhere as a gameplay mechanic, where would I be? Yeah, the work schedule sucks.
three numbers. Is it maybe a piece of paper that was on one of these? No. the hell normally there's like some clue on these Feels like when you go back to the fridge like a thousand times thinking there's going to be some sort of new food in the fridge even though there isn't there's no prompts Unless it's just not in this room. You know, there's that there's that chance too that like I just haven't found it. And maybe I need to come back in here at some point when I do. Cause I legitimately don't see anything that would even remotely look like a number that you would put into a safe. Like, guess not. Need more number nines. I don't know what that means. I don't know, man. This one's got me legitimately stumped. Let's check the carburetor. I don't know what a carburetor is to even be able to check it. But there's like legitimately, it's got to be somewhere else. Like got to be. Oh, no, uh, Mitch, just DM me and say, like, hey, I'm interested in doing a find me a therapist. What, what do we need in order to set that up? And then I'll uh, 
I'll talk to you from there. I haven't done one for a while, but I am willing to do it. It's just a matter of coordinating it with you. So you don't need to give me any information. Just let me know that you're interested in it. Chat, this is going to drive me nuts. Like, this is going to drive me absolutely nuts. Maybe it can't be opened. That'd be realism. That's a uh, that's an interesting point. I mean, I guess we can try all nines. I mean, we, whatever. We'll we'll try it. Not. Let's try all 99. Nope. Yeah, this is pointless. Starting to agree with you, Ellie. Starting to agree with you. I didn't even hear it. I didn't hear anything different. Oh. Oh my god. There's no way it would be the time on the clock, right? That just seems kind of crazy. Like where the three clocks on the hand are. Like if I did... Yeah, no. Like 12... No. No, 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 no. There's no way. Maybe this dumpster has anything. I mean, the dumpster is not going to have anything to do with this. Oh my God. Seriously, like, uh, you. I'm at such a crossroads right now because I'm like, okay, the stream has to go on. The stream must go on. But I so badly want to open this goddamn safe. So badly. Oh, I tried the poster count that like that was not it at least I don't think so I mean because I count one two three four five six seven posters one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's try seven, thirteen, ten. There's no way that this is it. Thirteen. Yeah. All right. We're checking other buildings. It's quiet. We're going to go see what the deal is in other buildings. 
people like to leave notes and shit that says, hey, yeah, you can open it, blah, 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 and watch it not even be nearly as complicated as I thought that it was. I want to know what the nine is about, too, but... it's Im So, for how overly simplistic these have been, I have a hard time believing it's anything more complicated than just... Find a note somewhere. Oh, my God. There's a freaking big dude in there. That's fun. I'm not a fan of that. In order for me to get through there, I'm going to have to kill it. Okay. I've got four shotgun shells. That's going to do it. I really hope that he... Of course. Of course. What do you want? Charred infected? What do we got here? Hey, C. Man, that could have been more fun if it was like posted. All right, whatever. Yo, when Dale comes by, he's going to ask for the safe combo, but just walk over to the garage and put it in yourself. Otherwise, he's going to bother you eight more times. Combo's 30, 82, 65. Someone needs to talk to his wife. I know she wants to think he's going to get better, but it's time to get practical. I heard the WLF have some real doctors at their base. Nobody would blame her for leaving, except Boris, but fuck him. 3082.65. Lame. I wish it was more of a puzzle than that. Oh, that is absolutely worth it. 100% absolutely worth it. Oh, yes. All right. Glad we did that. Glad we did that. That was good. I'm happy. It makes the hot swap between rifle and shotgun way easier. was Boris. I saw him shoot that WLF patrol against their own van. Jesus, I get it. They killed his daughter, but he just signed our death warrant. We have one chance on this. We turn him in. I know he's your friend, but if those wolves shot that girl over some graffiti, think of what they'll do to all of us if they think we're harboring the killer of three of their own. Let's meet at their usual place after curfew. X. Damn, this Boris guy... 
stirring up some shit. It sounds like Joel. Yeah, it does. Stock up. Just in case. Ooh. Where's the bow, though? I could find a bow to go with those arrows. Whoa. What was that? Oh, shit. Hope you did that, Tommy. Okie dokie. Looks like we got some infected. Yep, we sure do. Hunting season, friends. slow down <laughs> I'm trying man I would love to go back to Jackson and settle down but I've got my caregiver internalized object primary attachment figure to avenge and that's important to me so there will be no slowing down here Hot tub. And there were some people living it up here. These are just so eerie, man. Fall into savings sale with unbeatable deals. Stop by Rosemont's today. Bring this coupon to get 25% off your entire purchase. Hell yeah. Let's go. Saving that for if we go into another mall. A lot of flies in here. Ugh, God. Like the mildew and shit in here would just be awful. Anonymous, thank you for the 5,000 bits. Also, Graham, oh, Grandma Mitch, thank you for the 20 bucks 12 minutes ago. I'm sorry I didn't catch that. Been around a while from Glad Raid, I think. Love what you do. The vibes last night were immaculate. Glad to support how I can. Thank you for the 20 bucks, dude. I don't know if you're still here, but uh, thank you for the 20 bucks. And Anonymous, thanks for the 5,000 bits. Yolanda! I'm sorry. I won't be able to keep taking care of Alfie. You were right about the wolves. They turned out to be worse than the military. What I didn't expect is that our own neighborhood would turn on each other. They all saw what the wolves did to my poor Sophia. And what did everyone want in return? A peas? I deserved wolf blood. They should have joined me. Instead, they conspired against me, so I got them first. I poisoned them one by one. Not enough to kill them. Just pat them to sleep. Then I dragged them into the spored garage. Uli woke up. We wrestled. I shut him in there, but he bit me. Those traitors are going to watch each other turn. They will suffer. I hope they think of me when they lose their minds. I'm already starting to lose mine. It won't be long now. I hope you found peace somewhere outside of this shitty town. I hope you don't come back to see all this. If you do, I'm sorry. Boris. Oh my god. Jesus. So all the people we killed in that room were the people that Boris locked in there. Holy shit. Oh. 
Glad I could put them out of their misery, I suppose. But Jesus. That's intense. No! Get off me! Jesus. Well, all right. There's my bow. Is that Boris? Oh, I'll bet that's Boris. Recipe unlocked. Nice. I don't have anything for it though. Well, arrows are going to be useful because they're quiet. Sometimes recover your arrow from a headshot. <coughs> Good to know. All right, something tells me we're probably going to have to use this bow. Oh, hey, me. we got another trespasser, a girl. Did you see her? No, but the fucking guy is nearby. Oh, shit. We're looking for two. The fuck's all that smoke? He blew up one of our trucks. How'd you let that happen? Just find them. I want those fucking trespassers! <sighs> Alright, let's see if I can do this quietly this time. not to go loud if I can help it. What up, homie? trouble oh we are we are in no luck, huh, boy? trouble situation oh, this place is clean Shut up. all right we're going we're going we're moving in here. damn it <laughs>
for one trespasser. <sighs> Fucking school in the TV station. I thought that was scars. I think these trespassers might be working with them. Don't drop your guard. Grass, Ellie. Nice and easy. Okay, another goddamn dog. off distract her with the dead body and keep moving nice and easy ellie we lost another soldier we need to put her down now keep moving God. What the fuck is going on with these trespassers? Let's get one alive and find out. <clears throat> fuck that. Don't take any chances. <clears throat> nice and easy. I think she's got something. Didn't have much option there. Let's go ahead and repair real quick. Tommy. There's a lot of them. Are 
Hey, how hurt are you? I'll be okay. Your friends out there rushed me. No warning, no nothing. Tell me you didn't come alone. Give me shit about it later. You're a fucking idiot, you know that, right? Yeah. Alright. See that truck? That's your plan. We need to get some distance. searching for trespasser i got the one on the left this shit again poor guys by the fucking walls preach into the choir man have you tried that house yeah <laughs> <laughs> Got one left. There were four of them. Yeah, there he is. Man, if I was these guys, I'd just run away, man. Shield out. That would be awesome. Ellie, take out the driver. Look out! we got
okay? Never better. Okay. I think we're in the clear. Here, go. Oh, thanks. This way. 